Um, welcome, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be joined by James Johnson Perkins. Um, Perkins is a British artist who currently lives and works in the UK and China. His practice draws from themes such as memory, nostalgia and play in his work. He uses childhood materials, nostalgic objects, new media, drawing and performance to camera. And we'll be discussing Johnson Perkins' series of his ultra-large-scale digital works using Gigapan technology and montage. These multifaceted images juxtapose pop culture and art history references in such a unique way and create these amazing landscapes of different modern and historical figures in renowned sites and civic squares. So there's lots to talk about and there's lots to discuss. Um, sure. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. So I'll, I'll kick off with the first um, question. So the first question really to set the scene, photography is still a kind of a relatively young medium and has always been a product of technology from, you know, you think about the early te kind of pioneers who, they, you know, they were chemists, you know, often botanists, um, engineers, oh. and they always utilised the latest technologies of the day. And, yeah. you know, I kind of see you kind of taking on this kind of heritage. Can you discuss the kind of, you know, the use of technology to kind of extend your vision in your practice? Um. I think I think like uh, like uh, Peter Kenner that you um, interviewed before. Yes. I, I I started as a painter. Yes. Um, so I kind of um, sort of entered into that kind of historical painting hmm. kind of world, um, which I was very interested in. But I soon realised that um, well, two things. A, I thought that there were painters that were better than me doing yes. what I was doing, hmm. and and B, I couldn't justify why I was using painting okay. to make my works when I could have used photography. Yes. So I I was kind of brought up with um, sort of early versions of Photoshop mm. and Coral Draw before yeah. that, and I started to because I was essentially interested when I started making my work in how to sort of manipulate images and how yes. to put, place images with other images. Hmm. And um, I was doing that within paintings. Okay. But I was creating these, say, collages yes. that I was working from yes. to make the paintings. And then hmm. I realised that I may as well just use the, the, the collages themselves. Sure, sure. Hmm. And, al and also um, the images that I was making using these Photoshop, um, uh, sort of in the early days, I, there was no reason really to paint them. It was kind mm. of a question why why paint them? Yes. And so I kind of sort of fell into, or kind of, well, with enthusiasm. Yes. Uh, just sort of was sort of loving the use of how I could juxtapose images together, mm. Mm. Um, and that really just kind of led itself to um, uh, thinking about how I could. Um, do that in kind of new ways really. yes yes and so roughly about 10 years ago i mm. discovered this thing called a gigapan mm. camera mm. which is essentially a robot that you put a a, um, a camera in yes into and it takes lots and lots of pictures and i was taking okay. pictures of these very large landscapes yes and um so i started with the coliseum and i started with the berlin um uh, olympic stadium yes and I started I had these little soldiers that okay. I placed in them. Yes. And I, I just thought that I needed to do something more with these with these landscapes. Mm -hmm. And um, this really sort of led me on a journey of thinking about photo montage and thinking about um, how I could create something that was a little bit more um, that was kind of new in the yes. field, really. I suppose because yes. yes. I I saw these giant photo. Uh, color of these giant photos that I made using this robot. Yes. I saw them as kind of extraordinary things. They mm. were sort of beyond sort of landscapes I'd seen mm. before because they were so detailed. Yes. Um, and I started really playing with the idea, obviously influenced by um, people like um, Peter Blake. Yes. Because Peter Blake, you know, the famous um, uh, Beatles cover for Absolutely. Sergeant Pepper. Yes. Uh, that's kind of like a um, mm. sort of that's kind of a key work for me really because yes. he's basically playing he's, he's got a, a scene where he's basically playing with this sort of postmodern idea that you can just take 
people and things mm. from different times and places yes. and put them together in one image. Mm, mm. So really this was sort of like something that kind of interests me. And, and, and I was, at one point I was actually teaching that as a lesson. I was teaching oh, okay. people to do Photoshop <laughs> of uh, recreating the Sergeant Pepper cover. Oh, fantastic. And it, and, it, and it just kind of led to me thinking, well, I could make sort of bigger versions of, of this kind of thing. Yes, yes. Um, so it just kind of, I started off just thinking, well, I need, I need sort of something thematic. Yes. So I started off thinking about this idea of good and bad, mm. um, which coincident, coincidentally is very kind of, um, it kind of is a link to, um, now I'm going to try and pronounce his name correctly, mm. um, Oscar Raylander. Yes, yes. Um, because his, um, his famous um, photograph, Two Ways of Life, mm, yes. Essentially, is looking at these um, the um, sort of relationship between good, good and bad, and mm, that mm. sort of this ethical sort of struggle. So, I wanted to do something that was really um, similar to what he was doing, but of its own time. I think, yes, yes, because he was kind of like using photography, which is this new method, mm. to recreate kind of a historical scene that had its tradition in painting. Yes. And I think I was doing, or I have done something that's very similar in that I've created a scene from a sort of historical tradition, mm. but using this idea of um, montage, but a particular kind of montage using a very large image, a large landscape, but also um, I'm using the internet. So the internet yes. is my, my mm. sort of um, new technology, if you like. Yes, yes. But he, he was using sort of the new technology of photography Sure. Um, so he, he was, you know, trying to recreate something similar to the, the School of Athens by yes, yes. Raphael. And, and in, in some ways, my first image is kind of key, is sort of linked to that. But when I was actually making it, I was thinking more of Canaletto because I was yes. in Venice. Yes, okay. And I was just thinking of creating a kind of a, a Canaletto mm. kind of picture with, yes. with, with, a, with a thematic kind of element. Yes. Um, so I think I think the key things or the key new technologies would be the internet, yes. the use of this robotic machine to take large imagery, yes, and um, but also doing a similar thing mm -hmm. to these, these pioneers of say photography or or photo montage, absolutely, um, but using new technology within in that field. If yes. that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's so interesting. That, yeah, that's where the links are. Yeah, yeah, a, f a fascinating journey from you coming to painting. I call this it's a great kind of historical lineage of um, painters using photography. People like, you know, we all know Francis Bacon used the Mybridge images, but for you to kind of take on photography as a medium, it kind of makes sense, really. And yeah, in a, in a... When, I, when I did my, um, when I did my BA, yes. my dissertation was on Gerhard Richter and Francis Bacon. Oh, really, yeah, okay. And, and yes. how they use photography oh, to, interesting. to create their yeah. painting. So I think my, I've always had this sort of interest in sort of historical yes. painting, stroke photography, but really I'm more interested in the image making really rather than painting or photography or, you know, it's just a new way of making images really. Yeah, the process of making, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I, I think they're fascinating. Like you say, you're employing these new mediums and, you know, some of your works almost don't see seem human. They, they seem on a more kind of technological robotic scale because they, they almost seem impossible you know you, you kind of you're surrounded by these sea of images and, and and they're great they're fascinating you know I can spend hours looking at one of your works and not fully understand yeah. or I think see every single part yeah one of the things that's, that I that I, I enjoy about them is when yes. I've shown them because they have so many hundreds and thousands of characters yes they do they do engage yeah absolutely um, and yeah. people will spend like 20 minutes looking at them or, or longer yes and i i like that about them because mm. i you know we live in a world that's very transitory sure people sure. often will just look at an image for five seconds i think someone someone did some sort of survey or statistics mm. and something mm. like five seconds or something wow. time that people normally spend looking at pictures the, the, the two that i just finished the assembly of the gods and the, the great battle they, they they've They've taken roughly 10 years to make. Wow. Kind of a, <laughs> they started off being like two years, but they've taken a few, which is a long time, isn't it? It's, it's a really long time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. 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 That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I think the amount of work that goes into something is, um, and like you say, a lot of images, 
even though most people are more visually articulate now and we understand um, images because we play with images on our phone, we may be, and we, we decode images more than ever in history. But to have something um, like your yeah. image, which kind of stops you, you know, and, and it takes you a long time to decode it and interpret that. Uh, and that's quite rare, I think. I think most people have quite a passive relationship with images and we scroll past or we look past. But with yours, it's, it's impossible to do that, I think, to do the many justice. This nice, um, quote by John Berger when I was sort of doing a little bit of research. For yes. This, this interview. Um, it said, he said, the art of the past no longer exists as it once did. Its authority is lost in its place. There is a language of images. What matters now is who uses that language and for what purpose. Mm, mm. I, I like that. Um, no, that's, that's a lovely um, quote. Basically, yeah. he was talking at that time in 1972 about the kind of, uh, about how the images were really, you know, so many images on television and magazines. And, yes. But now, but now we're in a kind of, a sort of more advanced state of that statement with the internet, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and and I guess I I feel you know sort of sort of responsibility as an artist to kind of you know um, he says what matters is now is who uses that language and for what purpose. So I'm trying. I guess I'm trying in my work to try and mm. try and interpret the internet and sort of the internet world <laughs> that we live in. If that makes sure, sense. yeah, trying to make sense yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, and it's um. Yeah. And, and, and that's on a non-human scale, isn't it? It's something I've talked about in these interviews that the world is moving so fast and technology is exponentially growing. It's hard to keep up with all the latest techniques in, in, in the, you know, the kind of photography world, in the world of the internet. It's almost an inhuman kind of yeah. um, speed. And you're using your techniques and you're talking about using kind of robotic aided cameras it kind of makes sense, and it's kind of a commentary on that as well. I see that as a, yeah, an sure. in, interesting thing to happen. Yeah, okay. Um, the next question is your, it'd be good to talk about your Gigatage works more. And they show a really um, great kind of juxtaposition of these kind of recontextualized images, really. Um, yeah. There's such a massive, um, you know, it's kind of a dizzying amount of images. It's hard to kind of... It's kind of almost um, overwhelming, and there's a real a mixture of high and low culture in your works sure. that, that seem to kind of yeah. blend together effortlessly. Can you talk about maybe how you kind of where do you start? You know, how do you decide what images um, to use, if you like? Um, well, um, I was I was um, I was actually anticipating another uh, another question. Which um you know, who gives you permission to use those images yeah okay. um mm. uh, which which i was kind of, which i kind of i've always kind of sort of you know um no, no one gave hannah hannah hock permission to use einstein one of her collages you know sure sure uh, but we live in this sort of uh, age of the internet and so i, I try and use creative commons um images as much as i can okay but that's not always possible yes yes um but but, gem but generally the images that i use are they, they, they're a reflection of the, with, the, with the first image I made, the Great Battle. Yes. They, they were very much about just looking at my memory okay. and thinking of my own nostalgic memory mm. of all the things that I thought were good and all the things that I thought were bad, oh, be it high or low culture. So, true, true. so you know, obviously Hitler was bad. Yes. Um, uh, obviously, Darvade is bad. Yes. So in, in this picture, all the bad elements are on the left side and all okay. the good elements are on the right. Yes, yes. So okay. obviously mm. we think of Luke Skywalker as being good, but maybe he's, you know, that's slightly more complex. Yes, yeah. Um, but basically, you know, Knight Rider. Yeah. Uh, Michael Knight, we think of him being as good. So I that. basically went, I trawled through my sort of nostalgic past. Yes. Thinking of everything. So I literally just had a, you know, a, a, a blank book and just write down all of the things in my memory that I can consider yes. to be as good or to be as bad, oh, okay. and then found that image mm -hmm. in some kind of in um, some place. Yes, yes. Um, either from a poster or, or from some kind of uh, yeah, in, from usually using the internet. So basically, I just did that. Yes. And, sort of, and I and I and I 
could continue doing that yes until i die yeah sure sure being being made yes but i've got to a stage where i'm finding it hard to find the other ones oh okay therefore the image is kind of finished i think yes yes um but i did spend about another sort of couple of years working on them because i felt that they needed more of a um uh intensity Mm -hmm. uh, i'm interested in um very much interested in Hieronymus bus pictures. Yes, yes. Uh, pictures that have lots of things in them, mm. like these Renaissance paintings, where, where when you look at them, you feel slightly unable to interpret them because there's mm. too much going on. Sure, sure. Um, so you, you have this kind of uh, interesting um, uh, dialogue with the image where you're trying to understand what the relationships are between things. So it, yeah. it, it, in my images, the relationships are thematic or mm. there's some sort mm. of taxonomy on them. Yes. So the second image, the assembly of the gods, is simply like a collection of uh, theological characters. Yes. Again, I, I literally just trawled through as many as I could find. Wow. And I think I've probably found most <laughs> of the theological characters in history. Wow. <laughs> um, and so the, the, the picture that I did in Red Square Yes. animals it's a noah's ark yes but it's all the animals that i can find so right. again it's like a taxonomy of Absolutely. so I, you know i spent basically years trying to find every single animal i could possibly find an image right. of uh, if that makes sense yes yes and for my for the third picture i made that was based in new york yes. that was really a, i just set myself the theme it had to be sort of weird and wonderful oh okay like things that were strange yes yes and again that that very much links to my kind of love of Hieronymus Bosch, so that's very much influenced by Bosch. Yes. And I've tried with the images, I've tried to link them to some kind of um, historical element. Okay. Um, so, so within, say, the Red Square picture, it's, it's related to Noah's Ark pictures. Yes. I looked at lots of historical pictures of Noah's Ark. Mm. And for the Times Square one, it's very much related to Bosch. For the first one they made, it was Canaletto. And for the Assembly of the Gods, Raphael's um, yes. School of Rome. The interesting thing mm. is, I didn't know about um, I didn't know about um, uh, Oscar Raylander until yes. I started my second picture. Oh, really? So I, oh, that's fascinating. I didn't know, yeah. I didn't oh, know okay. of him. Oh, so when when I started my second picture and I found out about him, yes, I just found it sort of weirdly kind of strange connections that I'd made the same kind of journey by looking at. Um, Raphael's School of Rome, trying to yes. do an interpretation, but not just the gods. Yes, from um, Athens, I mean, but all gods. So mm. essentially, I was kind of on the same track as him. Yes, yeah, absolutely. 150 years later, mm. and I found that a bit spooky. That oh, I'm sort of <laughs> doing something that's very, you know, using new technology, but almost the same as what he was doing. Using yes, the new technology of photography. Yes, that makes sense. No, that's that's really interesting, actually, that you've done that work. But yeah, I definitely, and that kind of, that's kind of nice, it anchors your work in, you know, this great tradition of um, photo montage, but a great tradition of manipulation, you know, um, lots of people, lots of people have denied the fact of, um, you know, photography being kind of um, manipulated in this um, kind of mirror of reality, which we all know is not not true, but this always happened since the seminal days of photography, there's always been manipulation, and yeah, I think those parallels with Raylander's work is great, especially the two ways of life that you talked about. Yeah. And you know, I think it's very interesting. I think it's very interesting that um, he he himself he um, tried to discuss this. Well, he did discuss his his this work with the Royal Society of Photography at the time. Yes. And yes. There's a sort of famous speech that he did in Manchester, where he's basically trying to justify the use of photography to show historical scenes yes and at that time he was kind of vilified people said oh you shouldn't be doing this it's not as good as painting and and i i I think it's interesting that we're still having the same conversation 150 years later it's crazy isn't it yeah that's that people are saying to me you know how can how can you say this is you know (laughs) i I even i even get from people i think are quite you know intellectual people sure sure how can you justify (laughs) a photograph a photo montage as art when it should be a painting i even get this you know. <laughs> and, and, and it's a crazy argument you know it's a very um derelict argument it's a very outdated argument yeah. and um 
you know, photography has been in this kind of expanded field of painting for a long time, you know, since, you know, um, like steel glitz kind of started to exhibit, you know, photography and painting yeah. early. And, and this, I think this has always happened. You know, now it's more yeah. um, prevalent and well known, like most things, because we've got the internet, we're aware of things more. Yeah. But I think this, you know, this tradition has always happened, um, which I think is really interesting. And what I love about your work as well, I think, um, like talking about kind of this low and highbrow kind of images, it really taps into this kind of collective consciousness. You know, you see pictures of Ghostbusters and Slimer and the big yeah. kind of Marshmallow Man, and that that's the kind of collective consciousness of a large part of the population, certainly myself and certainly lots yeah. of other people that even if you just get your work at that level without the kind of metaphor and the allegory and the, the references, um, it's a great thing. You know, this it works on different levels. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what, what's very interesting though, and it's something I'm kind of thinking of a fair amount these days, is when you take it out of context, Yes. It has a very different meaning. Oh, so yeah. I've shown it in China because I, I live, live and work in China now. Yes, yes. And obviously they don't have the same connection. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have a, they have some connections. Yes. Sort of American uh, and English films, you know, that they watch, but a lot of young people, they actually don't know who all these characters are. Sure, wow. So yeah. It's quite oh, strange oh. because they seem <laughs> very, very, you know, very much part of your and I sort of, um, you know, upbringing. Yes, but for yeah. for someone in a different country, they might not understand it at all, and I found that quite strange, sort of taking <laughs> out of context. And I wonder how they read them. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Do they go back and try to find all those references, and do they try to um, collect their own kind of um, references? That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, what happens? I mean, do they work on the same way? I mean, yeah, they sure. Just interpret it as just all these characters doing things. Yeah. But, uh, I yeah. Know. I, I, I love that I idea. Of, that very interesting. That is interesting, isn't it? To see yeah. how people interpret. I, I love this idea of um, collecting images and this kind of taxonomy as well. And I think that's always been apparent in photography. Um, yeah. this, this kind of way of collecting, analysing, and you know, collecting artifacts. You know, you've got these kind of digital artifacts. I guess. Do you keep all yeah. them? You know, you must have a mass of hard drives full of fragments from the internet. Do you? I don't. Or do you keep those it. or not? Oh, you don't no, at all? I okay. don't. Oh, okay. No, and I, I made a rational decision not to do that. Not oh, okay. I couldn't save them. Yes, yes. But I didn't want to reuse the images. And I knew oh, that okay. I kept them. Yeah. But I would, I would reuse them in a very sort of, I, I could just make a picture very quickly. Sure, but sure. Especially okay. if I cut them out. Yes, and yes. And left them with the backgrounds that are empty. I could just then put them all into... But I very consciously didn't do that. Yes. Because I think it makes the pictures more special. Yeah, because absolutely. They are very yeah, much yeah. about getting the pic the picture that I found mm. and then using it, and then it's not really for anything else other than for what it's for. That yes, no, that does make sense, and, and like you say, it makes yeah. it more unique. And I, and I guess it's the thrill, um, the thrill of the hunt, the thrill of looking. I, I, I used to be yeah. an avid um, record collector and um, DJ, so I had about eight thousand pieces of vinyl at, at its peak, wow. and yeah. and part of that process was going to um, it was Bristol at the time and London. And okay. just, just spending whole days in record shops, just looking through yeah. um, vinyl to find, you know, kind of the most obscure first pressings, mm -hmm. and and just I listening to music. Singles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, quite a big collection of eighty singles. Oh, nice. Okay. And it's a fascinating thing, isn't it? Just to yeah, that kind of full of looking, that full of going to a library and walking down an aisle and finding something you'd never find. If you've done an internet yeah. search, and I guess you're really looking, and you're you're learning as well. I guess you're the process of learning about all the animals of Noah's Ark, all the saints. Yeah, it's that and all, 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 constant you know, different different gods from different religions. I, I now know, you know, quite quite a lot. I've yeah, talked, I wouldn't I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert. No, but I know quite a lot about the realms of different gods and the realms of sort of different religions. Yes, um, yeah. and I find that I guess that's part of the what interests me about making these these images yes. that I'm actually going on a sort of journey and finding out something about myself. Yeah, um, sure. But I've got I've got something else that I wanted to say. Okay. I, it's just another yeah. quote that I okay. really like. Um, it just it, I heard it the other day and I yeah. kind of thought that something that sort of 
prescient to me. Yeah. Um, so so um, David Bowie, um, he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, if if you feel, um, always remember that the reason that you started working was that there was something inside yourself that felt that if you could manifest it in some way, you would understand more about yourself. And then he said, if you feel comfort in the field you are working in, you're not working in the right area. Always go a little further into the water that you feel that you're capable of being in. Go a bit out of your depth. And when you don't feel that you, your feet are touching the bottom, you're in just the right place to do something exciting. Mm. Yeah, that's so, lovely. Yeah, that's great. It's kind of, it, it, it kind of hits the chord with me because I think also with these images that I'm making, I don't quite know what I'm making and mm. I don't know what I'm making at the beginning. Oh, okay. I don't know what they're going to be. Yes. And I, and I so there's, there's a, it's very much like a sort of, I have to just trust in a process yes. of something that I'm not kind of necessarily in control of sure sure and i like that i'm not saying that i you know i'm i'm doing what i'm i'm not uh, well, i guess i am saying in, in some ways i'm doing a little bit of what bo is saying oh, oh. But this this i think it's important as an artist to be slightly outside of your comfort zone yes absolutely. to not necessarily understand what you're doing yes, yes. And, and i'm finding that these images that i'm making i i I've tried to talk about them yes. uh, in different places, like at the Chinese Academy. Yes. And I, I, my wife said to me, she said, you, you're not really explaining them very well. <laughs> I've just talked about them in terms of just like um, the nuts and bolts, how they're made. Sure, sure, sure. And she said, well, there's, there's, there's more depth to them. Yes, yes. And the latest thing that I've been doing is um, I've been doing a PhD at Lancaster University. Okay, yes. And I'm writing short stories that are based on on the images. Um, okay, interesting. So I'm, I'm taking all of these images and then I'm, I'm making a story out of them. Oh, wow, okay. So, you're... so I'm using, oh. and I'm sort of using creative writing, yes. different ways of, um, uh, of, of writing uh, to try and recontextualize them, to try and understand what they are. Yes. So that's another level of the, the work that I'm making. Yes. Um, I've, I've done one short story and I'm just working on the second one. Oh, wow. Doing. Okay. Be fascinating to read those stories that you know that never learn. Yeah. yeah, so essentially, I want people to read those stories actually yes. in the exhibition. So there's another level of understanding what they are and how they can be interpreted, yeah, or sure. how I interpret them. Yeah, sure. I quite no, like that. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Yeah, it does add another level, doesn't it, to your work? And mm. um, I, I think that quote's great. And I think yeah, your comfort zone should expand as an artist. You know. I'd imagine a lot of the things you you have done, you know, learning how to use the gigapan and and working on such a big scale as well. I think a lot of people would um, shy away from working on such a large yeah. scale. I mean, the, the the images are roughly seven meters by two meters, which is huge. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. and they're, and they're in they're in the, the sort of the detail. Yes. is the detail of the image that I download. So I try and get the, the sort of the the crispest image I can find of yes. that image. Mm, mm. So there's no the, the de there's no deterioration from sure. the image that I find. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it does so, make sense. Yeah. So it's all yes. in the it's all in the sort of bit best detail it possibly can. So when you see them in the flesh, they're you know they're they're very very detailed. Yes, yes. So when you look at them on the, the internet, the versions that I've got, that's like a, I don't know. Um, much 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 smaller so yeah it's, sure it's, you know, digitized but you can go you know on the original ones it's a yeah. bit like looking at whether there's google maps you can go oh, okay you can, zoom in the, yeah. <laughs> you can see things that people are carrying and you know oh wow okay so it's that level of detail so they're, they're very detailed yeah yeah and i think that's incredible i think you know seeing your work on the screen doesn't do much justice it makes people yeah want to it's see quite them hard for, yeah for me to it's, it's quite hard often for me to communicate with people about them yeah sure them seeing. yes yes and i've only really been i've only really recently been showing them for the last sort of five years okay so they're not, they're not sort of a huge i don't have a huge repertoire of exhibitions of them yeah so it's quite it's often quite hard for me to try and get people to understand what they are by without getting around and actually showing them <laughs> on my screen, if that makes sense. Yeah, it'd take a long time to describe every single element in your pictures. Um, yeah. It would be a long conversation, I think, um, 
Yeah, you definitely need to see yeah. the, the physicality. It was about, of I think it was about four years ago I started printing them and having an exhibition. Oh, okay, fantastic. Um, no, actually, maybe five years ago. Yes. And um, it surprised myself because obviously before that it was all just in a computer. Yes. So it kind of surprised myself with sort of the detail of them, how big mm. they were. That's you know, been amazing. To them. Yeah, it was very exciting. It must have been really exciting to, um, to print. Yeah, those. the last two, the, the last one that I've just made, I had an exhibition in, in Nanjing. Yes. Uh, that I sort of this the, the first one I made, I remade it, and yeah, it's very exciting to see it as you know. And now I've made this other one, the Assembly of the Gods, that has maybe three times as many gods in it as it did. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> um, it's, so it's it's kind of yeah, it's it, it, it's quite hard to talk. I think it's quite difficult uh, as well to talk about my work because it's very much in transition because they take sure. so long. Sure, it's yeah, like, that, that's I'm incredible. not someone that just makes images, you know, that, and then sure, shows sure. in terms of these photo montage works that I make. Yeah. So I kind of have a vision and this seems a bit strange to have like 10 of them in about 10 years' time. <laughs> okay, fantastic. <laughs> so, so I'm not someone that's, you know, that sort of just has lots, is interested really even in ex exhibiting. I'm more interested in the process. The focus of showing. Yeah, of yeah, having yeah, sure. showing, and that and that again will be um, talk about this idea of um, intensity. Yes, when yes. Then when there's more of them together, there will also will be a different sort of activation for them. I think. Absolutely, yeah. Seeing all those in the gallery in one room would be quite overwhelming as well. Be interesting. Yeah. That kind of immersion. But yeah, and, and recently, due to the due to the lock, lock the lockdown. Yes. I made. A, um, I don't know if you saw it on my website, but I did a virtual reality um, oh, okay. a gallery of them. Oh, nice. Interesting. That, that was quite interesting because that helped me yeah, understand sure. what they look like. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's what great. And I do. <laughs> yeah, to utilise the technology to see the gallery set up yeah. must be incredible. So I've taken this very sort of big gallery with big walls yes. and virtual reality and I've put them in, the ones that I've done so far. And so it gives me an idea of, and that, that was quite interesting kind of process to understand mm, what mm. it would look like if I could show them how I wanted to show them. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love your using digital, and most people think of digital um, wrongly as being a snapshot and very quick, but yours, yours is a very labour-intensive digital process. And it seems that you're really enjoying that kind of process-based work, and your ideas are yeah. mutating and changing. It must be quite yeah. hard to find... Um, when do you stop? You know, when do you say it, that's enough? Um, it must be particularly hard with your work um, to kind of get to yeah, that point. I think I just have to set myself. Um, often I'll set myself a deadline. Yes. So I'll go, okay, I'll finish this one by the end of the summer. I'll finish this one by yeah. Christmas or something. Okay. But then, and I think the first two that I've made are finished now. Yeah, okay. And so the second two, I think I need to work on them to make them finish. Yes, yes. And then I'm working on another series of works as well. One of them's in Brighton. Oh, okay. It's, um, it's called, I'm going to call it the Raft of the Brightonian. So it's based on the Raft of Medusa. And it's, it's, it's hundreds of refugee ships coming into Brighton. Okay, wow, powerful. So it's coming yeah, yeah. onto the coast. Mm. So I've taken a picture of the, of the beach and the pier. Yes, yes. Wow. And, it, and then... The other one that I'm working on is called The Realms, and okay. it's uh, based on Henry Darger. Do you know Henry Darger? Yes, yes. Yeah, he makes these like really, really strange big panoramic. Yeah. And he was kind of an outsider artist. Yes, yes. So I, that that one's much more about um, exploring, kind of um, playing around with um, creativity. Yes, yes. So I'm just taking I'm taking images from very, very unusual sources and mixing them together and creating these scenes that are much more. Um, about playing around with ideas. Oh, okay, that sounds interesting, yeah, yeah. So how images yeah, relate like to each other, yeah, yeah, okay. How they're juxtaposed. No, it's fascinating, I think, yeah, there's yeah, so much. Yeah, freer. Yeah, yeah, yeah freer. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, less restraints, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? You know, you know, so much must change in the world when you start an image and finish that image, you know, your initial, yeah. you know, what, you know, it, it's crazy. It's really nice, uh, Jamie, for you, for you to accept to do this, because, yeah. I kind of think you get them. Yeah, um, I, I, I do get them. Yeah. I, I think they're they're fascinating for me. Um, yeah, yeah, that level and I, of detail I, I, and. Um, so I'm really, I'm really um, it, it, it's um, it's a pleasure for me to be talking to someone who sort of gets what I'm doing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it's a pleasure to talk to yeah. you as well. And um, yeah, and I think you really add to this kind of um, historical lineage of photo montage. You're taking it 
kicking and screaming into the 21st century in a very yeah, I mean, some, I mean, interesting as way. A sort of, as a teacher, you know, I've gone through and I've, I've wrote, wrote a paper yes. uh, trying to understand what, what my work was about as well. Yes. So I've gone through the sort of Rodchenko, Switters, sort of Dada. Absolutely, Peter yes. Beard, yeah. Peter Blake. You say it's John Stetslaker and... Yes. But... But, but also it's been quite interested in China because they have a little bit of a tradition of contemporary Chinese painting, uh, uh, photo montage. This is yes. an artist called Yo Yohan. Okay. Uh, he makes these kind of sort of pop art Mao collages. Mm, I'm interested. And then there's another artist called Wang Guangli who makes these, they're sort of like a, they're sort of made from, um, they're, they're a mixed of sort of collage and elements of, sort of pop culture. Okay. Really well, oh, interesting. And there's, this, and there's these really quite interesting artists that you might like called the Luo Brothers. Okay. And they make giant, super giant collages oh, using wow. propaganda posters. Oh, that they're sounds really interesting. Kind of interesting okay. as well. So they, yeah, so they kind of informed me a little bit. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, they're kind of artists that I find interesting. Yeah, but I, I think there's a great sense of playing your work, and I really love that. And um, and I think people, a lot of, some people are kind of almost scared not to manipulate and almost scared, they almost feel like they need permission to do something. And um, uh, uh, I was watching an interview by um, John Stezica about his, um, his movie stills work. And, um, and he said it took him a long time, you know, getting all these archival movie still images. And, and usually yeah. they're just one cut, you know, there might be a cut through the middle. But um, it took him a long time to say it's yeah. okay just to present an image upside down, and and that's okay, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not my imagery; yeah. it's been reappropriated. But it took him such a long time to get past that point, you know. And um, yeah, how are you as an artist responding to this kind of um, this new landscape, really? Um, I don't, I don't know, really. Um, because my, I think because the things that I make take quite a long time. Yes. I think it's. Um, it, I think I will make a work that, that relates to this crisis. Yes. Yes. But how okay. I will make that and what that will look like, I'm not sure about now. But I think mm. it's something that obviously I'm kind of musing on because it's such a, you know, it's unprecedented kind of things that are going on, aren't yes. they? Yes. Absolutely. I, mean, I like to think. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to a point where we just don't know what's going to happen. Right. So it's like you know it's. Almost, you have these sort of sense of catastrophe, and mm. you know that might be around the corner, which is a bit scary. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, I've sort of been thinking a lot about you know sort of dystopian things anyway within the things that I make. So, um, I've kind of already sort of been there, but I think I think only time will tell, really. Yes, um, yes. But I think I will make something that's very directly related to these experiences. And, I, hmm. and I'm definitely doing that in my writing that I'm doing right now. Oh, okay, so interesting. I've been okay. Sort of using hmm. aspects of what's happening now within my writing. Yes, yes. Relating to my images. So I've, I've been doing that, but also I've been, I, I, I started making these virtual pictures with, with images in, okay. these virtual galleries yes. um, with images in that I've made, just simply because I did felt, felt like, well, I want to have an exhibition, but what would it look like if, if, if it could be how I wanted it? Yes. And I start, so I learned how to use SketchUp, um, oh, okay. um, which I never used before. Yes. Uh, I'm really, really interesting this sort of process of making these little virtual things. Yes. Um, so for me, it was quite quite nice to sort of learn a new sort of process. Yes. Um, and I used it as a way to try and understand what I was doing. Okay. But, but I think mainly the, the main sort of feeling is, what. Oh, I've almost felt a sense of sort of despair because mm -hmm. the, the 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 very the very um, thing that, that I guess we do as artists. I mean, I've had lots of exhibitions. Yes, is we show work in galleries that people go and see. You know, absolutely, the communal yes. things. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Explaining things to other people. So yes. to take that community out of the picture, mm -hmm. as you know, I've, I've really felt like I've been in a vacuum. So, sure, sure. You know, uh, I think it's just sort of in that way it's been quite frightening yes uh, you know I, i'm an optimist so i think things will yeah. get better and Absolutely. things will you know get back to normal um but i think it's had you know a massive effect on how i just think about the world and how i think about you know and, 
and it has really made me think about what is the purpose of art actually just this sure, big sure. question oh, okay because you can't mm. show it to anyone if you can't show i mean i guess you can show it sort of virtually but yes yeah you know, it's it's sort of i think it's had a staggering effect on ev and everybody you know, so yes. I think creatively you can't not be affected, right? Sure, uh, sure. May, may I ask, I know, I know maybe I shouldn't really do this in a podcast, but may I ask how it's affected you, Jamie? Um, yeah, I, I think at the beginning it's quite difficult because before before this I was um, running a, a studio. So I was running a photography studio and I was running workshops mm. and there was lots of social interaction and, um, and it was a very sudden change. It was a very sudden transition. And yeah, doing a podcast seemed to be the yeah. right thing to do. Um, I've spent more time doing my own work as well, my own photographic work. But yeah, I, I think I started these yeah. to try to make sense of it. Really, I want to talk to a wide range of people, um, you know, using photography yeah. and the kind of expanded field of art, and to see what other people are doing. To see, like you said, that sense of community has been lost. I kind of almost wanted to rekindle that through these these podcasts and talk to other interesting artists yeah, right. yeah. And, and that's happened and that's been great really and, and the response has been quite overwhelming which I didn't expect which has been yeah, right. which has been great yeah, you know course, I think yeah. um yeah but it's an interesting thing but, but in terms of, yeah. but in terms of like synthesizing it into your own artworks mm. it's a very difficult thing to do isn't it because it's so I mean I, I, I very purposely thought when it was all happening I didn't want to just sort of make works you know um that were sort of very sort of direct I don't really do that really as sure sure you no know, because you could make pictures where people are far away from each other you know I could start making <laughs> I didn't really want to do that sure so sure that's sort of a bit of an obvious sort of um yes way of kind of you know sort of re re representing something um but I mean, one of the things I sort of became interested in was reading um, uh, Poe's um, Diaries and Play. Oh, okay. And I, just found, I just found that really interesting because it's, you know, mm. there's lots of sort of similarities and yes, sorts yes. of relationships between how people behave because there's this thing, yeah, yeah. you know, you have to stay away from people, you know, they closed off cities. And sure, kind of, sure, sure, sure. Um, so I found, I, found, I found that really interesting, kind of historically looking at that, you know. Um, yes. Uh, sorry, not Poe, um, Defoe, sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, um, Daniel Defoe. Um, so I've been, uh, yeah, I've been reading, but, but but in terms of like putting it into an image or making an image, mm. yeah, I'm kind of a bit stuck with that. And there's a lot of these um, sort yeah. of pandemic exhibitions. <laughs> I don't sure. know if it's that sure. the way, really. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I'm not sure if that is the way, yeah. Um, these virtual exhibitions. Yeah. I, 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 I'm very similar to you. I was, I was kind of thinking... I could go down that route, but everything seems too literal to, to kind of transcribe yeah. the kind of such a complex situation. Um, you know, you've got yeah, this kind right. of social kind of political breakdown and this kind of this climate yeah, catastrophe yeah. And, and everything's this kind of a race for the finishing line. <laughs> and, and um, you know, yeah. how do you sum that up um, in one image or, or even a body of work? You know, I've seen so many images of empty streets and, it becomes quite monotonous quickly. It doesn't. Yeah, um, so, so it doesn't it's speak obvious, of anything. It? it doesn't. There's no room for interpretation. There's yeah. no room for anything. There. But that, but that artist that you interviewed that um, did that work was in the hospital. That's that. That's yes. really that's really cool because that's something that's made sort of as a sort of almost as a side project of his interest, right? Sure. Rather yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, of yeah. his sort of photograph mm, photographic mm. sort of process. Yes. And he's, I don't think he was sort of thinking, oh, I'll make some work based on the pandemic. I think he was kind of just doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. His, his job was, um, he was a male nurse on a, on a, a quite a busy yeah. COVID ward in New York. And, and it was outside of his comfort zone. And he, he actually got asked by families to, kind of record these final moments and yeah th th there's no real political um statement there's no real um mm. they're interesting images you know they're quite yeah they are really interesting i, I thought they were incredibly poignant kind of yeah and, and i think they work as um images of the human condition they're quite existential yeah. they've got a great pathos there's lots of motion blur and movement and as yeah 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 as kind yeah, of yeah. beautiful individual images they work you know and yeah right which i think is a great kind of um yeah testament to him 
and there's a great legacy he's going to have after this has happened, you know, and this is all over. Yeah, yeah which is interesting. But one of the things I've found, um, I don't just make these photo montages, I also make works based on artist scores and other, other things. Oh, okay. One of the things I've just found, you know, this sort of slightly disturbing is my work is, you know, is about people being there and doing things. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I just, yeah, it's just hit me incredibly hard because like, if you can't have that, yeah. Then what do you do? Like it's like everything that you represent, what you do is kind of, you know, out the window. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I think everything's been re-questioned and yeah. Uh, and I was I was talking to um Sherry Rose, the performance artist, the other night, and um one of her longtime collaborators, Martin O'Brien, was talking about he made a performance piece for the gallery, um, which is all about coughing. So <laughs> and um right. and that was produced like five or ten years ago, and and he says everything he, in his whole archive has been recontextualized and that obviously yeah, brings right. on yeah, like a different sure. meaning a different context and nothing is neutral now everything is um loaded within this yeah. kind of covid landscape if whether we like it or not 